Hello, hello. How is everybody doing out there in the world? I hope you're having a nice day. I'm having a great day so far. Uh we're gonna start this lesson about buying and selling used items in about 26 seconds. Just give me a moment to test everything and make sure everything is working. It is a beautiful day here in Ontario, Canada. Great day for an English lesson, I think. So, we'll start in about 10 seconds. So, great to see so many familiar faces in the chat. I'm excited to do this lesson. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson. Today's topic is buying and selling used items and you may wonder how I come up with these topics. Well, sometimes they're related to my life. Currently, I'm in the process of selling some used items, used farm equipment actually and so, as I went through my week, I thought this would make a great English lesson. Sometimes, it's nice to buy things that are brand new. Sometimes, it's nice to buy things at a store or at a car dealership but if you wanna save money, it can be just as enjoyable if not more enjoyable to buy things used. I'm sure in your country, there are various ways to find used items. Things that other people bought new and they are now selling after using them for a while. So, welcome once again to this English lesson about buying and selling used items. I think you will really, really enjoy it. Before we get started, I do wanna say hi to a bunch of people. I did say hi in the chat already but hi to Anuat, Cecilia, Lemon Cute, Lolly Lolly, Mode Eggs, Tony, Wanda Prado, Harry 300, Sis, Supanto, I know that Vitor, Freddie Wolf, Key Park. I'm starting to repeat names, aren't I now? So, Yaroslav is here as well. Uh so good to see all of the members and other regular attendees of these lessons. Um let me see here. Um Mode says, thanks for thinking of us as you go through your day. Yes, you know, I view myself as a gatherer of knowledge through the week. I always like to look at things and listen to things as if I was an English learner because that's where I find my ideas for my lessons. When someone at work or someone in my family says an interesting phrase uh, or when I'm just doing something and I think, hey, I have not told all of the people out there about this and how to talk about it in English. So, anyways, I am ready to get going. Thanks to Dave for being here to moderate the chat. Please have fun English conversations in the chat while I am teaching. This is the one class where students are allowed to talk while the teacher is teaching if shared in the chat. Uh let me do one little audio check and then we'll get the lesson started. Everything sounds great. Here we go. So, there is a person called a buyer and there is a person called a seller and I know this is basic English vocabulary but I wanted to start the lesson by explaining this. If you don't have a car and you have money, you would say, I want to buy a car. If you have a car and you don't really need it anymore or maybe you want to buy a different car, you would say, I want to sell my car. The person who is looking for a car, the person who wants to buy a car is called a buyer. The person who wants to sell their car is called the seller. So, in the world of used items, you have buyers and you have sellers and buyers and sellers find each other through a variety of ways and I'll talk about those a bit later in the lesson but let me just recap for a second. What do I mean by used items? I mentioned it a little earlier in my introduction. A used item is something that isn't new anymore. Let's say that I buy a guitar brand new If I sell that guitar a year later, we would say it is a used guitar. It's not new anymore. It's now used. So, this lesson will be about buyers and sellers of used items. So, I won't be talking about stores uh, or any of the places where you buy brand new things but I'll be talking about used. When you want something, we say that you are looking for something. You could say, my brother is looking for a a used car. My brother is looking for a used guitar. So, if you know someone who wants to buy something, we use the verb phrase to look for to talk about that action. Right now, I am looking for another mower. So, I 
want to buy one. So, anyone who wants to buy something, we would say that they are looking for that item. They're not searching for it. It's not like they lost it and they're going to look for it because we use that verb uh, then as well. If I lose my keys, then I look for my keys. But if I want to buy a used guitar, you would say, oh, Bob's looking for a used guitar. Oh, are you selling your guitar? Bob's looking for a used guitar. Listing or posting. So, I mentioned that there are a variety of ways that buyers and sellers find each other. One of the ways is when the seller will put a listing or posting on a website. This has become this has become the most common way for buyers and sellers to meet. Um for buyers to find out what people are selling. It used to be things like a classified ad in a newspaper or people would put posters up around town, you know, car for sale. But now people will instead put a listing or a posting on the internet. I have a few pieces of farm equipment for sale. So, I have listed them on the internet. I have a listing where people can find the items I have for sale. And the places in North America particularly oh sorry my bad particularly in my area is to use something called Kijiji. This is a very Canadian website. I think many countries have the same thing. I know um in France, it's Le Bon Coin, I think. Freddie Wolf is mentioning that in the chat. The Good Corner, Le Bon Coin. In Canada, we use Kijiji but we also use Facebook Marketplace. I think in the United States, they use Craigslist and eBay a little bit more. All of these are websites where you can post or you can list what you have for sale. So, you'll see some postings here for computers. You'll see some listings here for computers. Uh let's see here. If you want to sell something the old fashioned way, you might go and buy a for sale sign. So, this is a sign that you can buy at almost any store in Canada and it's it's literally called a for sale sign. If you walked in, you could say, where are the for sale signs? I need to sell my motorcycle. And then you put the item you have for sale close to a street in front of your house and you put the for sale sign on it so that people know that that item is for sale. Um I don't have a for sale sign on the equipment I have for sale but maybe I should do that. I should go get a for sale sign today and put one of the pieces of equipment close to the road. So, we use this verb structure when we talk about selling something. We say that you're going to put it up for sale. I don't need my motorcycle anymore. I'm going to put it up for sale. I don't need my bicycle anymore. I'm going to put it up for sale. Or you can even shorten it and say, yeah, my bike's up for sale right now. So, basically, that means that you most likely have put a for sale sign on it but you certainly are eager to sell it. You hope that someone will buy it from you. And let's talk about some of the other unique terms. When you have a listing, you usually put an asking price. An asking price is kind of the starting point for what you will pay. The asking price for this drill is $10. The person has said that they want $10 for it. But here's something very interesting about buying and selling used items. In Canada, when you buy something in a store, the price on the item is what you pay. You can't ask to pay lower or negotiate a better price. In a store, you pay the sticker price. You pay the price that it is uh, that is on the item. But when you buy and sell used items, the price is negotiable. So, this person, I could call and say, I see you're asking $10. Will you take $8? If someone is selling a car and the asking price is $5,000, you could call and say, hey, I see you're asking $5,000. Will you take $4,500 or will you take $4,500? So, the asking price is kind of the starting point for that particular sale. Sometimes, people will not put a price on They'll just say price negotiable. So, if I put my bicycle at the road and I put a for sale sign on it and I said price negotiable, it means someone can just come and say, I'll give you $10 for that bike or I'll give you $50 for that bike and it means that 
I just want some money for it but we can talk and figure out what price is appropriate. At the same time, we have a phrase called make an offer. Sometimes people will sell something and instead of saying the drill for example was ten dollars, it the person could have just said drill for sale, make an offer and basically what they're saying is I'm not sure what this is worth. Tell me what you think you would be willing to pay for it and we can negotiate. So, make an offer is a common phrase in those situations. When you sell a used item, you usually want to talk about the condition that it is in and there are a number of ways to describe the condition of something. Um this is a farm piece of farm equipment called a plow. This is actually the plow I'm selling and if someone was to say, hey, Bob, I'm interested in buying your plow. What condition is it in? I would say, well, it's in good condition. It's a little bit rusty. It's actually really rusty um and there are a few things wrong with it and but other than that, it's in pretty good shape. So, it's any time you describe the state or what the item looks like. This plow, I would say, is in good condition um but it needs a little bit of work. So, when you buy a car or when you sell a car, someone might say, well, what condition is it in? And you could say, oh, it's in excellent condition. I just had an oil change. Um it gets really good gas mileage. Um there's no rust on the car. You would describe what the car looks like and how it operates. Anyways, let's do a few questions, everybody. Um, let me get to my question sheet. There are some questions here. This is from Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. Does it happen in Canada when a dishonest seller reduces the mileage of a car to make it more expensive? I'm not sure about that, Ruslan, but there are all kinds of little things people might do to try and sell something for more money. One common thing is to clean off all the rust and put a coat of paint over it. Um maybe people can change the mileage but it's difficult to do with modern cars but um certainly in the world of buying and selling, people sometimes try to uh they do things that are illegal or that they shouldn't do to get a better price. Um let's see here. Yaroslav, morning the wisest teacher Bob. We have in Ukrainian the phrase to buy the cat in the bag when we might buy something not in a good quality or used. Is there an equivalent in English. I'm gonna add a word there. Yeah, I'll go over some of the descriptors in just a minute but I would say that um there's a number of ways we describe things in English. You could say as is which means it might be broken. We could say it's for parts which means it doesn't work but you might want some of the parts off of it. Uh we could say great condition, brand new, et cetera, et cetera but I'll go over those in a bit. Yaroslav. Apple the frog in the chat says, Ruslan is always the first person. Almost. Ruslan is fast on the questions. So, BB says, I am. So, it's cheap skate. Got to flip some letters there. I am a cheap skate like Bob. That's why I will buy his old car. So, a cheap skate, just ignore the word there. It's spelt a little wrong. Cheap skate is someone who doesn't like to spend a lot of money on things. I'm definitely a cheapskate. That's for sure. So, I'm from Kurdish. Um diff bet upselling and cross-selling. Are there oh, I see. Is this is there a phenomenon in Canada buying an item in one market and simultaneously selling it in another market at a higher price? In English, I don't have this on my list. In English, this is called flipping. So, there are people who buy things used and they try to pay a really, really low price and then they will sell the item for more money later and we call that flipping. Sometimes people flip houses. They'll buy a house, fix it up a bit and sell it for more money. Sometimes people flip cars. They'll buy a car for very, very little money and they might fix it up a bit or paint it and sell it for more. So, we call that flipping. Sometimes people are flippers. They buy things and then sell them for more money. Great question, by the way. From Mode, the hardcore Bobby, what are the reasons that make you choose buying a used item over a brand new one? And what kind of items do you never ever buy used besides underwear, of course? So, I buy vehicles used. 
I choose to buy vehicles used because a vehicle with 50,000 kilometers on it is almost brand new but it's a lot cheaper than a new vehicle. I always buy computers brand new. I will not buy a used computer because I'm worried that that computer it's already old and a bit slow. So, I buy vehicles used and I buy computers brand new. Great question mode. Uh let's see here. Layla says, hi, teacher Bob. Is the expression old-fashioned correct when talking about old stuff? Please give us some examples. Thanks, best teacher. So, it depends. For something to be called old-fashioned, we're usually talking about a behavior. You know, he does it kind of the old-fashioned way. He makes bread the old-fashioned way by hand instead of using a machine. Um when we describe an item the item has to be really old. Like you could say, oh, it's an old fashioned telephone with the dial on it instead of buttons. So, the item has to be really old if you were to describe it as an old fashioned item. Uh let's see here. Ario says, woohoo, I'm late. Did you have a game that you bought online or have you ever sold your stuff? Thank you. Um I have bought games online. I think the last game I bought, what was the last game I bought? Civilization. I bought the latest Civilization from Sid Meier. Uh, I played it a bit in the winter but not lately. And have you ever sold your stuff? Yes. I have sold stuff used. It is an interesting process because you ask for a certain amount of money and then people wanna pay less and then you kind of negotiate and come up with a fair price. Abdullah says, what does as good as new mean? So, I will explain this phrase in a bit but I'll tell you right now. It means that It literally has hardly been used at all. If I buy a brand new car and I drive it 50 kilometers and then I sell it, it's not a brand new car anymore but it's as good as new. Basically, what I'm saying is I have hardly used this item. It's used but it's barely used, hardly used. I've only used it a little bit. So, it's as good as new. Hey, let me just do a little check here. There we go. Everything's fine. I was just getting a few errors there. Let me do a couple more questions and we will get back to the lesson. Uh let's see here. From Apple the Frog. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. No questions today. Just wanna say yesterday was my birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Uh I went to the park where the play was and fed the fish. It was a fun day. Well, I'm glad you had a good birthday. That sounds awesome and once again, happy birthday, Apple the Frog. Um from Rasandi, hey, Bob, what is the main language used in Canada? Oh, this doesn't have to do with buying and selling. That's okay. Uh English and then French. Those are the two most spoken languages in Canada in order. So, Musa says, hi, Bob. Just gonna say hello but have you seen Brent's video about his house flooded? I actually felt sorry for him. Yes, that is the first thing I watched this morning. I feel very, very bad. By the way, Brent from Speak English with this guy. I don't think he's in the chat right now. I think he was gonna go to his brother's place. His basement flooded. He he has like almost this much water in his basement. I think they got a lot of rain. So, yes, Musa, I also feel bad for Brent. I hope the cleanup goes well. I hope they get everything. Yeah, it just looked not very good. In the video, he shows a couple people pumping the water out of his basement. So, big flood there. Uh if you're watching this, Brent, uh, I hope things go well over the next few days while you get that sorted out. Uh let's see here. Marcus says, hi, teacher Bob. I've learned so much from your lesson. Thank you so much. Here is my question. May I know what is the difference between sell and sale? Thanks. So, I'm going to sell my bicycle. I am going to have a sale. That means I'm gonna sell a whole bunch of things like a garage sale or yard sale. Or you can say something is on sale. At a store, if something is normally $10 and it's now eight, we would say that it's on sale. So, I've used a few of those words. I've used those words in a few example sentences. Hopefully, that helps you out. Hey, let's get back to the lesson. Before I do, I wanna say hi to the 423 people watching. If you don't know who I am, I'm Bob the Canadian. I do English lessons here on this channel uh, once a week on Fridays. Uh and there's usually a nice fun video on Tuesdays. Um a recorded video. So, lots of fun. Let's get back to the lesson though. I should have a drink of water first. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Okay, where were we? Condition. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I have a frog in my throat. That's a weird English phrase, isn't it? So, used. We just use the word used to talk about anything that isn't new. If you buy a car and drive it home, that car is now used. For a while, you will call it your new car but in reality, if you wanted to sell it, you would say that it is used. You can see here there is a used computer for sale. That means that uh, someone bought this new but now it is being sold again. That's a good price by the way. I'm not sure what computer it is but $50 for a computer sounds pretty good to me. Of course, it is used. It might be four years old. It might be five years old. We also use the term secondhand. Now, for me, when I talk about something that's secondhand, I almost always talk about clothing or furniture. When I talk about vehicles like motorcycles or cars, I use the word used. When I talk about computers, used. It's a used computer but we don't use used when we talk about clothes. We usually say secondhand. I bought some secondhand clothes. Um although we do say used clothing store or thrift store. I'll talk about that in a bit but generally used is for machines and items and secondhand is more for things like oh, it's a secondhand couch. It's a used couch. They're kind of interchangeable I guess. I'm changing my mind on this one but secondhand is definitely another way to describe something that isn't new. So, a few more ways to describe the condition of something. So, you could say something is like new or as good as new. You can see in this ad here, someone is selling a watch and it says right here, like new, Samsung Galaxy watch. So, open box simply means that the box has been opened. That someone probably actually used this watch at some point but there's no scratches on it. Maybe they wore it once or twice and the watch still looks like how it would look if you just bought it. So, you would describe it as saying like new or as good as new. It's nice to buy things that are used that are like new or as good as new. We also have this way of describing it. You could say brand new, never been used or still in the box. This would mean something that someone bought and they never actually used it. So, maybe you bought a camera and you took it home and you opened the box and looked at it and you never actually used it. You would describe it as saying brand new or never been used or it's very common to say still in the box which means that you never really actually used it. So, you can see in this ad here, this person selling I think another computer. Brand new, still in the box. So, basically, they're saying, hey, I bought this but I never used it at all. You have to trust the person uh, to be telling the truth in that situation. Now, we also have a little phrase as is. Uh, in Canada and in the United States, when you buy something and it says as is, it might not even work. So, if you were to see a car for sale and it says as is, it usually means there's something wrong with it. They'll usually tell you. They'll say, hey, we're selling this car as is. Um it has a funny sound when you hit the brakes or we're selling this car as is. It has a dent in the side. We're selling this computer as is. It turns on but it shuts off after 10 minutes. So, when you buy something as is, you know there's something wrong with it. You know there's a problem. They'll usually tell you what they think it is but it's just a way of saying hey, this is used and it's a little bit broken but you might be able to fix it. Uh which brings me to another phrase. We have the phrase needs some TLC. When you sell something and you say need some TLC, TLC stands for tender loving care. Usually what this means is it's not broken but it might not look great or there might be a couple things wrong with it. If you bought this tractor and if it said needs some TLC, what that means is it needs to be painted. Uh it maybe needs an oil change. Maybe there's a couple small things that need to be fixed. You would simply say needs some TLC. Needs some tender loving care. And then we have the condition for parts. 
So, when you buy something and it says four parts, it really means that this doesn't work but some of the parts are still good. So, this truck maybe could be for sale four parts. You can see the front end is smashed up but the doors are still good. It looks like the tires are still good. Even parts of the engine might still be good. So, if I had the same truck but I needed some parts, I might buy this truck to fix my truck because this truck would be really, really cheap because they're selling it for parts. So, when you buy something for parts, you're literally buying it because you want the parts that are in it. Whenever you sell something or when you are looking for something, when you're looking to buy something, the listing or posting will have a description. The description is just some more information. So, here's a couch for sale. The asking price is $100 and it says comfortable seven foot couch available for pickup before Friday, July 29th at noon near Young and Davisville. By the way, this is an actual ad. If you need a couch and you are near Young and Davisville today, you could buy this couch. It's a beautiful couch it looks like. But yes, when you sell something, there is usually um a spot where you can write a small description of it. And then we have um when people start to express interest. So, let's say I was selling um a guitar. We'll use that example again. I would put a listing on Kijiji or Craigslist or eBay or Facebook Marketplace or Le Bon Coin if I was in France. Um and then you might get a few you might get some interest. You might get some inquiries. You might get a few nibbles. This is what we would call people showing interest. Is this item still available? Yes. Okay. Can I call text you? Please give your phone number. By the way, that's not proper English. It's a, it should be please give me your phone number or please tell me your phone number. Um this mean if you put a listing online and no one inquires, that's not a good thing. But usually when you put something online for sale, you'll have a few nibbles. You'll have a few inquiries. You'll have some interest shown. By the way, nibble comes from fishing. When you're fishing and sometimes the fish will nibble on the bait. So, we use the word nibble when talking about buying and selling as well. And let's talk a little bit about to make an offer, to accept an offer and to make a counter offer. So, these two gentlemen are negotiating a price. So, the person says, hmm and then the other person says, I'll give you $50 for it. So, the person on the left is offering. He's making an offer. He's he said to his wife maybe, I'm gonna go make an offer on the uh, guitar. I'm going to offer him $50. So, he's making an offer. I'll give you $50 for it. The other guy says, hmm and then maybe he thinks that's great. He says, you've got yourself a deal and the other guy says, awesome or you could say, sounds good or that's great. $50 sounds good uh but you could also counter offer. So, he says, I'll give you $50 for it and the other guy says, how about $60? Maybe the asking price is $70. The first person says, I'll give you $50 for it. He makes an offer and the other guy makes a counter offer. How about $60? And maybe they'll meet somewhere in the middle. So, to make an offer means to say, I will pay you this much for your item. To accept an offer would be to say, that amount sounds good. I'll take it. The item is yours or a counter offer would be to kind of negotiate the price. Um we have another little phrase when something is for sale and it's the phrase OBO which stands for or best offer. If I was selling I have to think of something else to sell. I've I've been uh, I'm selling um a couch and if I said $500 or best offer, it means that I'm asking for $500 but I'm willing to negotiate quite a bit and if I get a number of offers If someone says, I'll give you 400, I'll give you 420, I'll give you 380, then after a few days, I'll call the person who offered 420 and say, look, you're the best offer. So, it's yours if you want it. So, usually when someone says or best offer, it means they're willing to negotiate on the price. Now, the opposite would be to be firm on the price. So, you can see here someone selling uh, some Prada glasses. Price, firm. Here's someone selling a 10 carat gold bracelet and it says price firm. 
When someone says they are firm on the price, it means that's the price they want. If you called the person with the sunglasses and said, I'll give you seventy dollars if you were to make an offer, they would say, no, I'm firm at eighty dollars. I want eighty dollars for it. So, it means the person is not willing to negotiate. And then sometimes people will list something and they don't get very many inquiries. There's not very much interest. They don't get any nibbles. And so, they would they decide, oh, it's time to reduce the price. When something is reduced, if you look over at the price there, it means they were asking $150. The asking price was $150 but they've decided to instead ask for $125. So, it's reduced. This little fireplace is now only $125. By the way, this is still for sale. This is from yesterday. If you're in Toronto and you want a little fireplace, it's $125. And sometimes people don't actually want to sell their item. They would be willing to trade their item as well. So, this car is for sale for $6,500. We would just say $6,500 but if you look down here, you'll see contact Paul or trade for trailer, four by four truck, ATV, lawn tractor. So, instead of giving him money, if you have a big truck for sale or a trailer, he's willing to trade. He'll give you his car if you give him his trailer. Um by the way, also it says here low ballers will be ignored. A low baller is someone who offers a really really low price. If you called this person and said, I'll give you $1,000 for that car, we would say you are low balling him or you are a low baller. And so, he's basically saying, don't call me if you're only going to offer me one or two thousand dollars. I would like something closer to sixty five hundred. But also, he will trade for any of those other items. He's willing to trade. Hey, let's uh switch to members only mode. So, a funny thing happens when we go to members only mode and that's this. People who aren't members sometimes leave the live stream for a little bit. But the lesson's not over. So, just because you aren't a member, you can still enjoy the members questions and the lesson will start again in about eight or nine minutes. So, stick around. Don't leave. Let me reset my camera for a sec. Um anyways, that's I just the way it goes. Maybe the member questions aren't as interesting as I think they are. I find them quite interesting. Anyways, thank you to all of you who are members. If you want to ask questions right in the chat now, Um you can go ahead and do that wherever the chat is and I will be happy to answer them. What do we got here? Audi. Hi, Bob. How are you? Almost 40 years ago when I was a salesman, I like to buy used duplicating machines and repair, maybe repaint and sell with guarantee and servicing. That may that's good to make money. Definitely. Sometimes you can buy items for very little money and then you can clean them up a bit, fix them up a little bit and flip them. That was the word you would use. So, you were flipping them. That's what we would say. Vitor says, I'm sure that after this lesson, Bob is going to sell all of his used farm equipment. (laughs) Possibly. We'll see. Um one piece at a time. That's how it goes. Yaroslav says, what do you usually sell in your part of Canada? So, in my particular area, there is often farm equipment for sale because I live out in the country. If you drive around, people will sometimes be selling a tractor. They also, there are a lot more pickup trucks in my area. So, a lot of pickup trucks for sale and ATVs which are four-wheeled vehicles, an all-terrain vehicle. There's often those for sale too. Uh from the chat again from Wanda. Hi, teacher Bob. Do you used to buy preserved old furniture? Do you like it? Thanks. Most of our furniture we bought used when we were first married. Um we bought a lot of secondhand furniture because it was just a nice way to get started. Some of our furniture is new now. Well, new-ish. Um Noriko, hi, Bob. Did you reduce your farm equipment already? Did you get an offer for them? I sold the mower yesterday. A man came and bought the mower but I haven't reduced the prices yet. I'm a patient person. I'll wait and see if I get any nibbles. Uh, Freddie Wolf says, Salut Bob. How are things? As your country is huge, I think it's not easy to predict transportation costs and quite complicated to pick things up, isn't it? Yes. That would definitely be true. Sometimes people think they're buying something used 
but then they have to drive two hours to pick it up and maybe they need to rent a trailer. So, that can certainly add to the cost. I think I skipped mode eggs in here. Thanks, Mr. Bob. I bet nobody has thought of teaching this topic before. So, hats off to you. Yep. My continuing plan to teach all the topics. I don't know how many topics there are but uh as long as I can think of 20 or 30 words and phrases, the topic is a go. So, I just keep my lists and when one of the lists hits 25 or 30, I sit down and brainstorm some more words and I'm off to go. Let me just back up. I did Adi, Vitor, Yaroslav, Wanda, Noriko, Mode, Freddie Wolf, Lolly Lolly. Does the word cheapskate have a pejorative meaning in English? A little bit. Like you can use it to talk about like I'm a cheapskate. That's fine. If I said, oh, my brother's kind of a cheapskate because I know him, that's okay. But you can also use it in a really neg- oh, my boss is a cheapskate. That would be a a negative insulting way to say it. Maria C. Hi, Bob. No question today. Just wanted to say hi and wish you a great day and weekend. Interesting lesson by the way. Thanks, Maria. Key Park. Hi, Bob. How are you? How about your farm equipment preparing to sell? Successfully sale? Have a fair price? I'm never buying or sell items on the platform. It sounds interesting. I'd like to try. Yes, I sold one item yesterday. The little green mower that you saw if you watch my short lessons a couple days ago. The little green mower is gone. I got a good price. I got fifty dollars less than my asking price. That was okay. Uh, Harry 300. Hello, Bob. Can we use the word used for paper, newspaper, magazine? No. Like we say used books. Like we have used bookstores. Um secondhand bookstores, used bookstores. Used is probably more common but newspapers, no, we don't usually use it for that. We have recycled paper which is paper that you buy to use as new. So, no. Leticia, hi dear Bob. I just wanna say thank you. You're welcome. Pony Taylor, hi Bob. I just wanna say thank you for all the lessons. It helps me improve my English and my son, four-year-old, really loves to watch your videos. Awesome. Say hi to him for me. Uh let's see here. Harry 300, Bob, have you ever experienced getting a product that is not the same as that is posted on the marketplace when you buy something online? Uh no but a friend of mine bought lamps for his room and in the picture, they looked big and when they came, they were really, really little. So, he thought he was a little bit annoyed but also kind of laughed because he kind of got tricked a little bit. Uh, Lolly says, merci pour la réponse, Bob. Thanks for the answer, Bob. No problem. Noriko, can we use the phrase still in the box for clothes or other items that aren't literally in the box? No. With clothes, you would say never been worn, okay? Uh five t-shirts for sale, never been worn, brand new or like new, never been worn. Sorry, still in the box is for things and never been worn is what you would say for clothes. Um Freddie Wolf, from time to time, de temps en temps, is that what correct? It is written in the ad, carpet dealer, go your way. Have you a similar expression? No. I'm not sure what that means. I'll have to look that up. Uh, Vendeur de tapis? I don't know. Musa, I'm actually searching for someone who is selling a Logitech G733 Lightspeed gaming headset. Please tell me if you know someone who is selling that item. You are definitely looking for that item. You are interested in buying that item. Hopefully, you find one. Modags, I only asked one question today. I'm sure most of the people who leave the live stream during members only chat don't wanna hear my dumb questions and comment. Oh, I doubt that. I think they leave because they are most interested in the actual lesson and less interested in members only chat which is actually one of the most enjoyable part of the lessons for me. So, um let's see here. Back to the uh questions from the forum. The French wolf. Hi, Bob. As you live near the US border, can you easily sell your items if a US citizen is interested in it? Some things. Most things, no. It's very difficult to sell a car to someone in the United States because we use kilometers, they use miles. It can be done but there's a lot of paperwork involved. It means you have to fill in a lot of forms in order to do that. It's much easier to sell a car to another Canadian. Farm equipment, it's a little easier. Farmers regularly sell tractors um to people in the United States and people from the United States here. There's less paperwork so it's easier to do. And Freddie Wolf also says that means they will always buy your items for nothing. Ah, interesting. So, that's back to the carpet dealers we're talking about. Audie the tie says, I have to buy a pot from an online 
when the picture was too big but when I got it, it made me crazy. Yeah, they they do interesting things with online photos sometimes. Viva. Hi, Viva. Hi, Bob. Do you buy your kids secondhand clothes? I think it's economical way because they grow so quickly. I sometimes do. Yes, we often go to thrift stores to buy secondhand clothes but we also have a lot of hand-me-downs. I didn't talk about that because it's not buying and selling. A hand-me-down is something that a family member gives to you. When our kids as our kids get bigger and when their clothes don't fit them anymore, we give them to their cousins. So, we call those clothes hand-me-downs. A lot of the clothes our kids wore when they were younger were hand-me-downs from Jen's sister. So, a hand-me-down is clothing you give to another family member. Let's see here. Mode says, now when you bought this huge property from your mother, I think it was quite the gamble. I'm sure you had to think a lot about it. What helped make the decision at such a young age? We moved here and lived here and rented the house from my mom for half a year and then we would probably say it this way. We fell in love with the place. This is a really nice place to live and we lived here as renters. We paid my mom rent and after about five or six months, we fell in love with the place. So, we decided that we wanted to buy it. So, yeah, you I don't know if I'll ever move away from here. It's just really nice. I'm really happy that I have an English teaching channel where I can share the property I live on with other people through video. It's it's kind of fun. Musa says, I once got tricked by a seller. I bought a baby toy for my cousin and the seller gave me weird old books instead. That's that would be frustrating and aggravating. Uh mode eggs. Always ask for dimensions when you buy used items. Yes, good point. Ask for the measurements. Ask for the dimensions. Noriko, mode, your comments and questions are always helpful, useful, which means awesome. Yes, I would agree 100%. Um let me see here. I'm gonna answer one more question from here. I'm gonna turn members only chat off because we are going to go back into lesson mode in just a moment. So, participant mode, subscribers. There we go and I will answer this question yet. Wilson says, hi, Bob. Did any problems on your used items or you got the bad experience on it? So far, so good. Although, I do have a few people offering me way less money than what my asking price is and that's a little frustrating. I think when you sell something online, it's easy to lowball someone to give them a really, really low offer. Uh let's see here. Oh, I said I was I'll do one more question. Noriko, morning, sir. We have tons of bookstores that are selling used books in Japan. Is it the same in Canada? I'm gonna add a the there. Can we call books that somebody already read used book? Thanks. Yes, we call them used books and we call them used bookstores. So, often you can go to a used bookstore and buy a used book. It is very common here as well for sure. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. We are at, let me check here. Oh, we're totally on time. When you list something for sale, sometimes people will give the reason why they're selling it. This is a way to let the person know why you're getting rid of it, why you're selling it so that they trust you a bit more. This person says, I'm selling because I bought a bigger boat. So, you know then if you trust the person, he's not selling it because it doesn't work. He's not selling it because there's a hole in it. He's selling it because he bought a bigger boat and he doesn't need this small boat anymore. Actually, for me, that would be a big boat but he bought a bigger boat so he doesn't need it. So, he has given a reason. I have farm equipment for sale. In my ads, I said, no longer need this equipment. My neighbors are doing my farm work for me. Okay, so I'm giving a reason why I'm selling something to assure the potential buyer that it's still a good item. Uh sometimes we'll say something is a bargain or a steal or a deal. Uh by the way, the verb to steal means to take something without paying but when you say something is a steal, you mean that you don't pay a lot of money for it. If you saw this car and the asking price was five hundred dollars, You would say that's a real bargain. That's a steal. That's a deal. You would be really happy to pay that much money for that car. Now, I think maybe that's actually a toy car. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Um sometimes you describe the price as steep. 
So, if the person instead wanted five million dollars for this car, you would say that's too steep. That's a steep price for that car. That means you think the person is asking for too much money. You think that it is too expensive. When a buyer and seller agree on a price, we say that you've closed the deal. So, tomorrow I hope no, Monday I think I'm going to close the deal on another piece of farm equipment. I think someone might come and buy it. So, then we will shake hands. People still shake hands when they close a deal. It's nice that um the pandemic isn't as bad right now. You can shake hands with people but that's how you close a deal. When the buyer and seller agree on a price, we say that you are going to close the deal. Sometimes when you try to sell something, there's not a lot of demand for that item. So, here picture this. If I tried to sell a snowblower right now in the middle of the summer, there's not a lot of demand. We use the word demand to describe how many people are interested in buying something. In the summer, there's not a lot of demand for snowblowers but in the winter, there's a lot of demand for snowblowers. I have a snowblower that I might sell but I'm going to wait till late fall because there'll be more demand. Nobody wants a snowblower right now but I sold my lawnmower yesterday or a mower yesterday because there's a lot of demand for mowers right now because the grass is growing. Sometimes people will say that they'll pay you cash. When you sell something used, people usually pay by check. The most common way to pay now is with an e-transfer. So, they transfer money directly from their bank but sometimes people will say, give you three thousand dollars cash for that car or I'll give you two thousand dollars cash because cash still has a bit more of an appeal to people. Um it's easier to um not report your earnings if you sell something for cash. And then just a couple places where you can buy used things but places that aren't exactly the same as buying it from one person. So, a garage sale or lawn sale or yard sale. There's three words by the way. Is when you put a bunch of things on your front lawn on a Saturday morning usually and people come and they buy things from you. You put your asking price on everything with a sticker. People will make an offer. They'll say, oh, I see you want twenty dollars for this table. Will you take fifteen? You make an offer but a lawn sale, garage sale, yard sale is a place where you um a time when you sell items on your front lawn to people who are driving around on a Saturday looking for deals. We also have stores called thrift stores or secondhand stores. Some people just uh will call it by its name. Here we have a store called Value Village and we have a store called Goodwill but a thrift store is a place that um sells used clothing. They sell secondhand clothing. They sell all kinds of things that have been used um by the previous owner. So, uh thrift store shopping is something that teenagers really like to do. They like to look for name brand clothing at thrift stores so that they can get a real deal. If you can find something made by Prada in a thrift store, it's probably a steal. It's probably a good deal. And I'm going to end with a couple buying and selling phrases that make me smile. One is the phrase when something is too good to be true. So, if you did actually find this car somewhere and if you told your friend, I saw a Lamborghini. That is a Lamborghini, right? Yes. I saw a Lamborghini and it's only five hundred dollars. Your friend would probably say that's too good to be true and what they mean by that is there's gotta be something wrong with this car. There must be something broken. There has to be a reason. It can't be a perfectly good car. That would be too good to be true and then the other phrase is the phrase you get what you pay for. So, let's say this tractor is normally twenty thousand dollars and I buy it for ten thousand dollars and then the wheel falls off. Because I paid so much less than what people would normally charge for it, we would use that phrase. Well, you get what you pay for. So, when you pay well below the asking price and something breaks quickly, we often will say, hey, you get what you pay for. Basically meaning, well, you didn't pay enough for it so there had to be something wrong with it. With my lessons, you get what you pay for though. Um 
in a positive sense because you don't have to pay for the lesson. So, it's free. Hey, that's the lesson but I do have a number of questions from the forum that I'm going to answer. Before I do that, I wanna say hi to the 482 people watching. It's always fun to see the number. Um I used to get nervous about it but now it just makes me happy. So, welcome. Uh let's finish off this lesson with some with some questions. Um this is Min from Vietnam. Hello, Bob. How are you? I'm good, Min. I hope you are too. Do you often buy things online? I don't often buy things. So, <laughs> so no but when I do buy something, I will look for it online uh to get an idea of how much it would be used and then decide if I want to buy it new. If something is if I can get something used for a hundred dollars but I can get it new for a hundred and twenty, I'll probably buy it new instead. But yes, um let's see here. Cheng says, hi, Bob. How are you? Good, Cheng. There is a Chinese expression to describe used stuff. Percentages as as brand new such as 99% new sedan. Is there a similar phrase in English? No. No, we don't use that. We usually just say mint condition which means it's in really, really good shape or like new like I mentioned earlier. Um but with vehicles, we usually just mention the kilometers and we'll say things like it's in good shape, in excellent shape. Uh we usually use like good and excellent to describe things when they're um for sale. From Renata. Hey, Bob. Hi, Renata. I'm here just watching. No question today. Just stop by to say hey. Have a great day, sir. You too, by the way. And thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Muto obrigada. I should learn other languages, shouldn't I? Uh let's see here. It's from Sala. Can I say a new brother to describe use something? No, not in English. We wouldn't use that phrase. Um from Mikalo. Hi, dear teacher Bob. I know you always give useful and funny advices. So, what can you recommend for make better memories memorizing of English words which sound the same? Just use them a lot in speaking and in writing um and use the website. Oh, I can't remember the name of it but you can search for It'll show you YouTube clips. Maybe someone in the chat remembers the name of it. Youglish? I think that's what it's called. Is that the website? Let me just double check for a sec. Youglish.com. I think that's what it is. Yes, and I'm gonna put that in the chat for a sec. I'm clicking in all the wrong spots. Youglish is a fun website because it lets you um punch in a word or phrase and then it'll show you clips of all different videos where people are using it. Um Aria, a Bob fan. Hi, Bob. Could you please explain a little bit about the term hand-me-down? Thanks in advance. So, maybe this question came in before I kind of talked about it. Um we have kids who are a certain age and Jen's brother has younger children, brother and sister-in-law. So, sometimes when our kids are done wearing their clothes because they've outgrown them, they've gotten too big, we will give them to her brother and we call those clothes hand-me-downs. So, usually it's between family members but we've also gotten hand-me-downs from people at work who had older kids than us. Mohammed, hello, teacher Bob. My question is, did we talk about bartering in this lesson? So, we didn't talk too much about bartering but we do trade sometimes for things. So, there is a barter economy in Canada as well. It's not as common as it used to be but sometimes people especially farmers will trade things instead of using money. Uh definitely for sure. Uh let's see here. Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea. Hi, Kimmy and Kiwi. Good morning, Bob. What does refurbished phone mean? Do you use the word refurbished for other items too? Thank you for the awesome lesson. I should have included that word. Refurbished means that someone has made sure that the item is working. So, if you have a phone and you sell it to a store, they might refurbish it. So, they'll clean it. They'll test it. They'll make sure it's working. They might put a new battery in. They've just done a little bit of service work on the item to make it better than it was when they bought it. So, it just means to you know clean it up, fix it a little bit. We usually use it for phones and electronic items. Um we don't use the word refurbished for cars. Um instead of for cars, we would just say you know fixed up and ready to go but for a phone, we would say refurbished or computers refurbished. 
Um, I think that's it. I think we are done. So 923, a little bit early. Usually I go almost an hour, but I think that was a pretty good pace for the lesson. Couple things before you go. Number one, um, tomorrow is July 30th. So there's no live stream tomorrow, but next week, Saturday on August 6th. Yes, August 6th, there will be a live stream on Saturday outdoors, hopefully, if the weather's nice. This lesson, I will edit out all of the user questions and I will make it a pure lesson about buying and selling and I will re-release that in a couple days. Do watch it again. That version has pretty good English subtitles if you need them. It's an automatic subtitle service but it's pretty accurate. So, if you need um subtitles, uh, do watch this again. It's a good idea to watch or listen to something two or three times. Um Thanks to Dave for moderating the chat. Thanks to all my members for helping make this channel possible. It really, really is appreciated. So, let me say bye to a few people. Bye to Noriko. Bye to Moat Eggs. Bye Adi. Bye Harry. Bye Vitor. Bye Eugene. Hi Eugene. Hope you're doing good up there. Uh bye to Key Park and bye to Lolly Lolly. Um I did thank Dave already. Uh and thanks to everyone in the chat for making the chat a friendly place. I know my members work very hard at that. Um and then uh I think that's it. Bye to Martin, HPC, Xylek, Audi Key Park, Aria. I know Ario uh Ario is here somewhere as well. Bye to Haya. Tony. Bye to Tony as well. Um that's it. I'm gonna go. I hope everyone has a good day. Bye to Maria C. Um and everyone else who's here. Bye everyone. Have a good weekend. Have a good Friday. Uh, I'll see you Tuesday with a new lesson. It's already made. It's uh I think it's a it was a fun lesson to make. So, hopefully, you like it as well. Bye.